Hey, good Monday afternoon, everybody. I'm KHOU 11 meteorologist Tim Pandagis here with your tropical update. We're mainly going to be focused on still major Hurricane Lee, and we'll touch on Tropical Storm Margo, which is actually very close to also becoming a hurricane at the recording of this video. Lee is a Category 3 major hurricane. Now, since we last spoke on Friday, it's undergone something called rapid intensification first. It got up to a Cat 5, but then it underwent rapid weakening, too. It weakened all the way down to a Category 2 briefly. Now it's back on an intensification phase. Today is Monday, September the 11th, 2023. Seems like we've been talking about Lee for quite some time. When we look at storm lifetimes this season of the 13 named storms we've had, Lee's only been around for seven days. That's not really even a comparison to what, when we had Franklin. That was around for 13 days here. And remember Hurricane Don, the first hurricane of the season? That was around for 11 days. So Lee will be around for quite a while longer, but so far it's only been around for a week or so. Here's how it looks on the latest satellite presentation here. 120 mile per hour Category 3 major hurricane here. Way out in the middle of the Atlantic, so not impacting land at this time. There's Bermuda, several hundred miles to the south there, but on infrared satellite imagery, which is what this filter is here, tells us the temperature of the cloud tops. And this is a 12 hour loop of that infrared imagery. And you can see intermittent flare ups of convection wrapping around and firing around that center. If we go back even farther from 12 hours, say 18 hours ago, it once again had a well-defined eye. It has lost that a little bit, but has maintained its intensity. Pressures come up a little bit, 948 millibars, and it is moving very slowly to the northwest at 8 miles per hour. Despite overall conditions being very favorable for intensification, I think it's slow movement. It's upwelling. It's doing uh, mixing up the ocean water, so I think it's starting to upwell some slightly less favorable ocean temperatures to take advantage of that fuel there. That could be one reason why it's kind of plateaued just a little bit over the last uh, 24 hours or so, but it is expected to strengthen once again up to a category four in the next 24 hours. Look at how beautiful this system is on visible satellite imagery. You've got the spiraling outflow off to the north, the really tightened spin here, and you can see even for a time, it looks to be an eye trying to warm and clear on out there. Just overall a spectacle, a textbook looking uh, hurricane here. Again, safely away from any land at this time. It's a very large system too. When we talked on Friday, its diameter was around 650 miles. So it has spread out a little bit more. Latest on here is 765 and its wind field is also quite large and will be getting larger as it gains latitude. Hurricane force winds 75 miles per hour greater extend out from the center about 65 miles. Now tropical storm force winds 39 miles per hour greater extends out about 160 miles from the center. You're going to find the strongest winds and the further uh, radius from the center on the northeast quadrant of the storm center at this time. Here's the latest forecast track from the National Hurricane Center. Again, right now, a category three, 120 mile per hour winds expected to undergo some intensification here over the next 24 hours by tomorrow morning up to 130 mile per hour category four and then slowly beginning to weaken as it gains latitude and encounters less favorable sea surface temperatures. And I'm going to show you why in just a second. Now, as we get far out in that forecast cone, of course, it gets wider because confidence, confidence gets lower that far out in the forecast track. We start to see a large spread here, and I'm going to show you the computer models here that warrant this spread. But by Saturday morning, we're still at a category one 80 mile per hour winds. Now, you may be saying, well, that's much weaker than it was. Sure, it is, but its wind field at this point will be stretching out well past this cone. Keep in mind, the forecast cone is where the center of Lee is forecast to track. Say it tracks a little bit farther to the west on the western periphery of this cone. That means widespread wind impacts to many major cities along the northeast seaboard. OK, keep that in mind there of tracks a little bit farther to the east, lesser of impact. So we still have to watch this carefully as we get out into that time frame. So the weakening phase will be brought on by slightly less favorable sea surface temperatures. 
below 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can see as it tracks to the north here, by the time we get to the middle to end of this week, as it's pretty much due west of Bermuda, which is right there on the far eastern periphery of the forecast cone, we start to see sea surface temperatures in the upper 70s at this point. Now, what caused this? Well, we just briefly talked about it in the second slide of this presentation is Hurricane Franklin. It moved through this area, was around for a long time, upwelled, mixed up the ocean, and this is actually its scar in the sea surface temperature. It extracted so much energy, so much heat from the ocean that it's actually cooled it down a little bit. So Lee is forecast to track over that wake. But then keep in mind what's here, 83 degree water temperatures. This is the Gulf Stream, okay, that comes all the way along the East Coast and then jets out off to the east. When Lee tracks over this, I would not be surprised if we see a little bit of a spin up of some intensification briefly as it gets that very favorable waters there to really uh, try to take advantage of. Because north of there, the yellows and greens are significantly cooler water temperatures and we'll start to see it drastically weaken. So here are the computer models. This is what we call the ensemble. So this is a mix of the GFS, the European ensembles, and the Canadian ensembles as well. Now, what the ensembles mean is that each line here represents those computer models, but run dozens and dozens of times tweaking a variable to see if we get a different outcome. Notice there is a considerable spread as we get farther out in time. Remember, as I said, the cone gets wider because confidence drops. Well, this is exactly why. We've got good confidence, good consensus, good clustering of the ensemble plots to the south. Here we are, here's Bermuda, just to the west there. Very good consistency taking it pretty much due north. As we get northwest of Bermuda, we start to see that spread, in fact, from the far eastern component here of a forecast track to the far western, that's about a 750 mile spread. And there is definitely a considerable amount of these plots that take it inland in coastal Maine and over into Nova Scotia as well, as it's weakening, but its wind field is getting much larger. So the landfall location still uncertain. We've still got another five to six days that this is going to be out over the open Atlantic before it could potentially bring impacts. Cities that could see impacts, of course, Boston, Cape Cod, Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, coastal Maine, up into St. John, Halifax, Nova Scotia. Notice the spread here of all these computer model ensembles. Even some take it as far off to the west as into New York City and Connecticut. Those are outliers, most unlikely to occur. The more likely scenario is somewhere in the middle here, potentially into Atlantic Canada, getting into this weekend. And this all gets back to what is steering Lee. It's starting to take that northwesterly turn now because it's sensing the far western periphery, the weaker side of the subtropical ridge that's been steering it west its whole lifespan so far. It's gonna run into a trough of low pressure developing and dipping over the Southeast United States, and that's gonna prevent it from going farther to the West as well. It senses that weakness in between the two pressures here, and will start to turn North. How strong that high is, how strong that trough is by the time we get into mid to late week, will determine how far East or West this tracks and which of these models will verify. Okay, how about the operational, just the GFS and the European models run, okay? Very good consistency with both of those models showing a similar track, potentially just to the west of Nova Scotia here. Again, that's a compilation of all the ensembles here as it takes it off to the north. Here's a look at the wind field. So this is the GFS. Remember I talked about how the wind field as it gains latitude will be expanding? That's likely going to happen here. Look at the, how large the wind field is. Now the yellows is gonna be where the tropical storm force wind starts to uh, pick on up. So that's already starting to impact Cape Cod, Boston, Nantucket by later on this week on Friday, as depicted by the GFS, the American model. Now the European, slightly faster here, and we're jumping a day ahead though to Saturday. And here it is, notice it's much, much closer, a little bit farther to the north and west. That would bring some very strong gusty winds to Cape Cod, the Boston area. And as it's to the southeast of Boston, we're getting those winds coming on shore and that could be funneling in water uh, to Boston Harbor. 
So keep that in mind there as we get on into that portion of time that there could be some significant coastal flooding dependent on the exact track. Massive waves out there. There are some uh, buoys that depicted wave heights already out in the Atlantic with Lee of over 45 feet. So just massive waves. There's Bermuda there. We've got the the large waves, 20, 25, 30 foot waves as we get into Thursday, Friday, really along the entire eastern seaboard. So even though wind impacts for a large portion of the east coast will remain east and offshore, we're still looking at the, the ocean impacts, meaning large waves, large swells, coastal erosion, rip current risk, higher than normal tides, likely for days to come along all of the eastern seaboard. So we've got Lee out there. We've got Margo that's right on the cusp of becoming a hurricane itself and two other waves. We are just a day past the peak of hurricane season, which is September 10th. And you'd know it by looking at the map right now. We've got another wave here that likely has a moderate chance of developing in the next seven days, 60%. And the next name on our list is Nigel. Here's a look on infrared for Tropical Storm Margo, 70 mile per hour winds just below the threshold to become a category one hurricane. And the presentation is rather impressive here. So I think it's gonna get an upgrade to a category one hurricane in the short term. And that's where it's forecast to stay as it drifts to the north, well to the east of Bermuda. So this should not be an issue uh, for anybody other than uh, ocean going freight and uh, traffic with that. All right, here's the next name on the list I talked about, Nigel. That'll be our 14th name storm if in fact that wave out in the Atlantic does get a name in the next couple of days. All right, that's the latest out on Lee and Margo. If you have any questions, a lot of you have reached out on social media. I appreciate it. I enjoy answering your questions. I'm on Twitter. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok as well. We'll see you again tomorrow.